Welcome to Reed at Studios. I'm Reed. My kids are big fans of the Pokemon franchise and I started playing it again after Pokemon Sword and Shield launched a couple years ago. Like every Pokemon game, the story leaves a lot to be desired. To be honest, Pokemon story writers are never that far away from creating amazing stories. That being said, they always miss the mark. We're going to try to fix that here today. Here are my five steps to elevate Pokemon Sword and Shield storytelling. Alright, the first dynamic change we are going to introduce to Pokemon Sword and Shield is Spike Myth is going to be your hometown instead of Postwick. Now what this does is it introduces a few major elements that I think could elevate the story. Spike Myth is much like Postwick. There isn't much to it except for a different community and there wouldn't need to be much added except for introducing encounters. Instead of having a generic character from a cookie cutter city, you have someone coming in as an outsider. You deal with loneliness, you deal with conflict, both external and internal. Should you be on Team Yell, should you be supporting Marnie, or should you be out doing your own thing and trying to become champion in your own right? Now on top of that, Marnie and Pierce are two of the best written characters in the entire game, including the post game. And Marnie, I would argue, is even more compelling of a rival than Hop or Bead. Now, listen to this music that I have in the background. This is Marnie's general soundtrack. And to me, this is a much better rival song than Hop. And it's the same way for all of Team Yell. They have this rock, high energy sort of atmosphere, even though they're in an impoverished area. And let's talk about this impoverished area. There is dirt on the road, air all dark type Pokemon, these people are panicking, they shut down the city in order to keep Marnie ahead of everybody else. And you have to fight through all of that to not only become champion, but to be recognized by your community. Does that sound compelling or not? Not to mention, Marnie and Pierce are heavily involved in the climax of the story as well as the post game with Swordward and Shieldbird. To me, this is a no-brainer. Start out in Spike Myth, it makes the story so much more compelling. All right, change number two goes to Leon. All right, so there is a blueprint for this already, so I can't take full credit for it, but I think that it 100% needs to get implemented into the story. Now, Leon should feel the pressure of being the champion. He should feel the strain. First of all, he's a small town guy who has big dreams and he can't tell me at any point this guy was never nervous never scared never anything like that when he faced up against people when he was 10 years old when he faced down Eternatus by himself there has to be some point where there is a negative side to his attributes now much like how in protagonist He's from Postwick. He gets lost often. Why is this not explored more in story? And I mentioned Pokemon Evolutions before. He did not defeat Eternatus, even though he took him on single-handedly. The challenger did. The protagonist did. He is personified as this perfect-like character 
and it just doesn't sit well with the rest of the story. It really doesn't. So, having him more human will present him in a way that is less jarring. Now there's a point where you are offered an audition to become a gym leader in this town called Balanlala. And I thought that it was a major missed opportunity for Pokemon to really do something with the gym leader storyline. Now the gym leader system is central to the Galar region and it's important to the entire community. Now, this offers the protagonist with more things to do and more ways to get involved with the story. Balanella is without a doubt the prettiest city to date in any Pokemon game, and Pokemon would really benefit from their customers spending more time there. Stow Inside already offers more, why not Balanella? Now, this also can change direct tension between the protagonist and Bead. At this point, we go through the story and Bead is just some jerk that we stop from doing dumb stuff. This creates more conflict, higher stakes, and maybe at this point he does put his trainer career on the line instead of getting cheered out of it. Another addition that you can make is while the protagonist, now from Spikemith City, comes from dirty area, he can find acceptance in a prettier area. And now, that's not something that's juxtaposed on purpose, but the concept of finding somewhere where you're accepted, as opposed to somewhere where you're rejected, is incredibly rewarding. And it allows deepening the gameplay and rewarding gym leaders for consistent involvement in the game. You get more people into your game, get them more involved, and this story really builds upon itself. You can also build a relationship between your character and Opa, which has so much history to it. This was really a missed oversight that can get corrected. And in my rewrite, Balanella blows up. Now, let's talk about this power shortage that Rose was blabbing on about. Now, it's supposed to happen in 10, 100, 1000 years, whatever. But Rose's obsession with it only makes him seem like a madman. Now, what if we take that and make it more immediate? Make the problems actually real and give him validation. Because at this point, our antagonist doesn't really have any ground to stand on. What if there is power starting to get lost through the cities? There is some sort of empathy for him, some sort of understanding. Have the city have power issues? It can coincide with the Dynamaxing in the cities. The thing that causes Leon to have to jump from this place to that to save the day. Also, this gives Bede a higher presence in the game because he is assisting Rose. This all ties in together and it can make for powerful, grand, awesome storytelling. And in my rewrite, it happens.
Now, something that felt really underexplored was the slumbering wield lore. Now, I know that Zacian and Zamazenta come from there, but in a sense, so does Hop and Leon. Now, this can play into Leon's uncertainty, Leon's fear. It could be why he freaked out so much at Hop for going in there because he has his own memories. Also considering that this would be a mid game to late game encounter now. So there's a lot more that you can do. And this is one of the areas that I thought could really use some opening up as far as Pokemon, as far as items. It's a beautiful place, very mystical, very mysterious. There's also no explanation for where Eternatus came from, and I thought that all of that was a massively missed opportunity. And there you have it. Those are the five things that I would change in order to make Pokemon Sword and Shield a great storytelling game. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I sincerely appreciate it. It means a lot to me. I don't always get these videos out often, but knowing that you guys are out there, you're looking, and you're interested in what I have to say, it means the world to me. Do me a favor, please, please like the video, comment, share. Show your Pokemon fans that there are still people out there who believe in the potential that this franchise has. And perhaps they'll even take a look at all this. I'm sure that they'll take a look at it with all the copyright things that they can hit me for. But I'm doing it anyway because this is a review. This is a critique. And I really think that they can step up their game and do something truly amazing. Like share follow me please let me know so i can get more of these out to you guys because i really want to do that thank you guys so much and we'll catch you on the next one